Hi guys, Mr. John here. It's a late night, well, past midnight, not that late for me. I used to get, uh, stay up to four in the morning or something like that. Regardless, what better fun could a guy have than sit in a workshop doing some discrete secretary, which is tricky as hell. So what you're looking at right now, well, it's a little board that I made to be installed in the apparatus on my job site. This is a differential amplifier. As you can see, all it has is four transistors and a dozen of resistors around them. But the funny part about this one is this one is precisely matched. The transistors have been matched both for differential pair itself and for the current sink that I use as a uh, instead of a long tail resistor. The schematic looks like this two NPN transistors matched. The things that you have to match with these and which is very easy to match actually if you have enough transistors that is is a VBE jun basimeter junction voltage if that is gonna be equal this scene should perform quite good next thing you have to match is the resistors how do you match those? well you take and buy a hundred pieces at least you take a reasonably good multimeter and you go measure one, remember another, remember, remember, remember and find a couple which is reasonably closed and under reasonably closed I mean for a hundred ohm resistor I matched those to within 0.1 ohms so this is like 100.1 and this is like 100 or 100.2 very very close next thing that I matched I matched those two transistors as well because uh, I wanted this to be thermally stable, hopefully. The value of the resistor here is 220 ohms, 15k, 22k and 11k. I did actually precise, no, not matched, I picked a resistor which has the closest nearest value to this 22k and 11k in order to have more or less precise voltage here and thus precise voltage here and thus precise current through the tail of the differential amplifier the gain is set to be about 10 which is kind of ridiculous but uh, you have to understand what the point of this circuit is and it is and it is, it is, it is a strain gauge amplifier. Basically at work, I work at a facility which produces some miscellaneous sorts of plastic shits and giggles. That uh, means uh, mostly office products, sheet protectors, folders, plastic stuff. Plastic pieces of shit again, as I'm telling you. But, and the thing, uh, there is a thing in that plant called an extruder. It's basically a giant device which produces a ton of heat and consumes even more energy. Basically what it does is it melts the plastic in the granule which come to the facility as the granules, it melts them, it squirts them it kind of extrudes them, hence the name, through the thin sliver producing a film. And it has a bunch of rollers after that to make sure that the film is evenly cool, so it doesn't warp, so it's straight, so it's even in thickness over the entire band and, and bada 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 beam bada boom. And there is a roller which has a strain gauge on it. 
that scene is used to as a feedback to make sure that uh, the last roller there is is just a bobbin in other words it winds the film on itself and the speed of the motor which winds that film is determined by the feedback from the strain gauge and recently the one of the strain gauges just bit the dust the strain gauge installed in it was a two resistor one like that it goes to positive it goes to negative but both of the resistors were variable and that's one part that's one strain gauge and there was another one like this too I exactly identical but this one was connected backwards to provide a differential input and the output was taken from here and from here and the voltage on this was 5 volts so called excitation voltage for the strain gauges sensitivity was quite great at 5 volts a nominal full load of 50 kilograms a pop these two gauges produced a differential output of 250 millivolts and uh, well to be honest the, the people at that plant are kind, are kind of cheap asses even more cheap asses than I am because if I were to have if I were to control that plant I wouldn't I wouldn't have cheaped out on this I would have purchased the right thing without trying to skimp on every penny so this, they decided to skimp on every penny because the sensor uh, exact replacement sensor has, you have to wait for it to arrive and you have to pay more quite a bit more and I understand that but still it's a goddamn industry it's not a piece of cake you have to pay money because that makes you money you but those dumbasses do not really realize that if you buy the correct part which just takes five minutes to bolt on and then you can put the extruder into action and make money but they instead they decided to go the difficult route so those sensors that they purchased they are actually full bridge so they have two more resistors but those two resistors are fixed and they do not change at all and the output usually is taken like that and those sensors are actually used as one piece for weight scales and stuff like that so you take output here and here this one changes this one stays fixed that is done to make sure that the output has a little swing and a little uh, offset voltage but I decided to use two sensors because that's how it was installed but the problem is that if I take the output here and here and I load it up fully I would have n not 250 millivolts oh, but a whopping what was it? I but a whopping 10 so see I need a bit of gain there you might ask yourself why you just said that you need a gain of 10 well let me explain that's why the original sensor was um, rated for 500 newtons roughly 50 kilograms the settings they used on that machine was 40 newtons of tension which is roughly 4 kilograms so I took that as a working point and 4 kilograms out of the full load of 50 kilograms is about 8% the scene is linear so the maximum 50 kilograms would give you 250 millivolts and 8% of 250 millivolts is 20 millivolts so I need an output of 20 millivolts output to the existing circuitry my the sensor that they purchased is rated for 400 for kilo, 40, 40 kilograms or roughly 400 newtons and for they uh, remember they use a setting of 40 newtons roughly four kilos 
4 kilos out of 40 is 10 percent 10 percent times 20 millivolts is 2 millivolts so that's what I'm gonna get from those sensors that's why I need a gain of 10 to make sure to turn this 2 into 20 in order for the existing circuitry to be happy and yeah remember those old sensors they had um, they are made for weight scales uses a single sensor and it's called a single point sensor because only one element in the bridge changes and the sensitivity of this one is 2 millivolts per volt the input is 5 volts so 10 millivolts right here so actually I made a stupid mistake here because it's differential I'm gonna have plus 10 millivolts here minus 10 millivolts here 20 millivolts in total and the differential output here is 250 and as you can see there are not 25 and 250 but that's not a problem because they're not even rated for the same amount so they will be stressed as a uh, other amount anyway for something which is really interesting for you maybe if you're still watching this stupid video is to see how well this scene matched and it's matched pretty good I had f just look at this it's a split power supply for you for I don't know what comes out of this transformer really but 5 volts AC I guess running into a doubler which I use to which is basically taking a positive high cycle putting it into the positive rail and negative into the negative rail smooths out I'm using an LEDs as a shunt voltage regulator so it works all right provides me about 2.3 volts which is roughly the amount uh, that controller puts out for those tension strain gauges which was 5 volts so 2.5 volts plus 2.5 minus 2.5 anyway let's connect it up and see uh, let me give you a first a quick look at the board as you can see here you can see a 100 ohm 1% resistor and here you can see 4.7k resistor you might be asking yourself what but don't be fooled 4.7k 4.7k resistor is on top of the 100 ohm that is what I've done to trim the maximum amount of offset I can here's 220 ohm resistor which is uh, there here you can see some other through hole resistors the transistors that I picked as a pair have been uh, had their faces sanded and glued together in order for me first to form a visible couple so I don't mess them around and uh, to thermally bond them together because that helps so that's two outputs differential output differential inputs right now are joined together that's that loop to do that you see there one base to the other base and connected to the zero volt of this split power supply okay so now if I connect it here I should see some voltage well ideally you should see none but nothing is ideal in this world Okie dokie. And you see about one millivolt. It's gonna warm up and get a little bit better actually. But that's 1.5 millivolts. It will wiggle around a little bit, but that's still better than nothing. And this is not an input offset voltage. That's actually how to measure it is to short the inputs together to look at the output that you have 
and divide that by the gain. So in my case, the input offset voltage will be if I put a decimal play point right here, and that is po 0 0.15 millivolts, 150 microvolts, my friends, 150 microvolts, which I think is an excellent result, considering that this is a completely discrete circuit. Just for the reference, LM358 has an input offset voltage which ranges from 2 up to, to up to 7 millivolts and this scene has 0.15 millivolts just so you have some point of reference to understand how nicely this little bastard is performing did I break something? <laughs> do I overload that? I might have snapped a wire. Regardless. Well, there's your problem, I told you. My jumper broke off. And I soldered it back and you can see 13 millivolts of output offset. That's so you see how freaking sensitive this thing is. If you breathe on it, it will change. And I'm speaking literally here. There's zero bullshit in these words. So yeah, it will settle to about 1 or 2 millivolts, which is 100 or 200 microvolts of input offset voltage, which I think is freaking awesome. I could have trimmed it more, but meh. Imagine if the output was 0.4 millivolts. That would mean that the input offset is 40 microvolts, and that would have been completely nuts. If you ask me for this little circuit. Oh look, it's actually sub millivolt now. Again, literally, convection current, air convection currents in this room are mucking around with the circuit right now. That's how sensitive it is. It is bloody ridiculous. As I'm waffling around, actually, my speech by exhausting air is actually affecting this circuit because I about half an hour ago I was sitting there silent without breathing too much to <laughs> and not moving at all and the, and the scene was about 0.1 millivolts up and down so rather stable anyway enough I'm not dead as you can see and tomorrow we'll have to try this in the actual workplace and see how well it works. <sighs> Congratulations if you come to this part of the video. I really should give you some kind of eh, prize for making it this long but maybe you learn something in the process so whatever. Thanks for watching. See ya.